Hello there, welcome back to my second ever YouTube video. My name is Sir Runs A Lot Gaming. I'm here to show you the mobile perspective of RuneScape 3. So I'm an exclusively mobile RuneScape 3 player. Uh, I've been playing for a little while now, and uh, if you've watched my first video, you learned a little bit about me, and I showed you how to defeat normal mode care pack while on mobile. And in this video, I'm going to do a full normal mode Zuck fight. This was my original inspiration for making a YouTube channel, was I kept tr dying during the Zuck fight on mobile. And I kept looking for video after video, and all that I could find were people doing the Zuck fight on PC. It wasn't until I found one semi-obscure YouTuber who accomplished a full Zuck fight on mobile that I even felt like it was possible to do this. And so once I practiced and died and practiced and died enough and followed his strategies, I finally got a full Zuck mode kill, you can see in the video here that I have my Zuck cape, so I did eventually beat it without dying and without banking. Um, I actually do accomplish that again in this video, so if you want to see just how to survive without dying, this is a, this is a solid strategy um, that I use here. So it's going to get going. We're going to jump into this fight pretty soon, but I'm just showing you here a couple of the things in my inventory, a couple of the... Uh, the uh, setup that I have in terms of armor and stuff and weapons. I am bringing best in slot gear for the most part for magic, and um, you don't necessarily have to use that. You absolutely do need to use tank armor. I tried doing this in subjugation just to see if I could, and kept dying towards wave 12 and 13. Um, so I'm going to so I'm gonna see if I can get that done, actually, and maybe post a video with a significantly less armor on here. But for this video, I mostly just wanted to show you my strategy for defeating Zuck on normal mode. It is a little bit different than you would do it on a PC, but uh, it works for me. I've got about 30 kills now, my best being 22 minutes and I think 28 seconds. So this video will take a little bit longer than that. And uh, if you don't have the time, then go ahead, feel free to skip through the video, look through some of the parts that you're struggling with. If you want to skip maybe towards the end, just to the Zuck fight, I'll leave a, a timestamp there for you to do that. But we're about to get started here. I always start with my Animate Dead. I always throw in my God Book. I always make sure I drink my uh, Elder Overload potion there, or it's a Holy Overload there. And I put on some some poison on my weapon as well. Just all the things that you can do to help you out. Here we go. So, this round one is very, very simple. It doesn't even matter where you stand, really. You just want to make sure you pray melee pretty much the whole time. Uh, the first one, two, and three waves. It's mostly melee people. This one, I don't even really think too much about. I'm showing you my armor here. I'm not even really paying attention because praying melee and kind of letting your, your guy will do his thing. You don't even really need thresholds here. I don't even think I use a threshold yet until round two here. So I know that these archers spawn in these two corners, and I want to take them out as soon as possible because, of course, range is strong against magic, and I want to get them out of the way as fast as I can. So I pray range just for the beginning of that, just to get those archers down. And then I go right back to pray melee, right back to pretty much not paying too much attention because these melee dudes obviously have the disadvantage against me and are pretty easy to take down. In this fight, I don't bring a BOB, but if you're learning this, I absolutely recommend that you bring a BOB, a beast of uh, burden, so that you can carry significantly more food. But one of the things I do is on this second wave here, if I need to, I'll soul split this big, me this big melee guy here. Um, I accidentally end up clicking the uh, little bird thing that drains your adrenaline and prayer, but uh, it doesn't really matter, but you get this soul split here, which is kind of nice if you need it. There's a couple of different times I do that in this video, and if you want to uh, just get those free heals, it's kind of a smart thing to do. This wave three, we're kind of flying through this, but uh, I try to take out one of the big meleeers before the two range guys get going. Take out those two range guys, of course. You want to hide behind this little rock here. Uh, just so that you can kind of avoid some of the, the melee guys, like I said, going right after those archers as soon as I can. And uh, I'm going to pray melee throughout this wave, just because I have the tank armor, it's crit balloon, I have animate dead on. I'm not super worried at this point. I'm actually not even taking um, enough damage for my powder of penance to really work really well. So if you can see there, um, this powder of penance is something that you absolutely want to get if you're not going to use a penance aura or if you don't have a blessed flask. It's about a mil each, and I'll show you that here, right there. Um, it's totally worth investing in. I use them pretty much for every single run. You make more than a mil per run if you make it all the way through, 
So it almost pays for itself there. Um, and I'm going to highly recommend it. It works just like the Penance Aura. And you see me here getting some Soul Split gains back as well. Um, but again, that Powder of Penance is extremely helpful because it helps keep your prayer up if you don't have a Blessed Flask and if you don't want to bring a million different prayer potions. So this is Wave 4. is the first of the Igneous Waves. I go straight after the first Igneous one. You can tell them apart because they're just a little bit bigger. So you got to stun these guys, which is pretty simple. Both... Uh, the asphyxiate and i can't remember what it's called i think it's deep impact right above that there on my action bar can work on these guys so i just kind of alternate between the two see a text from my mom there <laughs> but uh yeah so going after these three guys i'm not super worried about the little minion guys because they don't do too much damage and i know you'll see in a second that i'm about to get a whole bunch of soul split gains off of zuck so I know I go immediately to zuck i, I do the insta kill i don't even worry about those minions i throw on my uh, well, I would throw on my soul split here just to get a little bit of my um, health points back, but I don't actually need it at this point. Usually, I'll one cycle these these uh, Zuck DPS checks and get through them as quick as possible just to kind of keep my kill count or my kill time down. This time, I don't end up doing it mostly just because I'm I'm showing you basically how to survive on mobile. So in my first video, I talked a little bit about how you have to constantly move the camera. You're seeing that a whole bunch of different times throughout this fight. Um, if, you, if you can tell, I don't actually face north most of the time in the Zuck fight. And I don't really know why I do that. I just find it a little bit easier for me if I face south, at least face the camera south. So face it however you want, face it whichever way makes it uh, easier for you. There's no real right way for your camera to face, at least in the Zuck fight. It's just whatever helps you to see um, and make you uh, obviously do a little bit better. On the actual Zuck fight himself, though, I will say um, there are a couple of different moments where it is kind of important that you face the camera the right way, but I will show you that when we get there. This first uh, challenge wave that we have here is pretty simple. It's a lot easier if you have the Zuck cape, so you can use that Zuck cape boosted Omni power. But basically, uh, if you have full auto, well, I guess if you're mobile, you're not full autoing, right? But if you can, you want to try to take advantage of the chain. And if you have greater chain, that's even better. Um, you just take out all the DPS as quick as you can. I usually just save up my thresholds for that. I try to make sure I have 100% adrenaline. And uh, yeah, that's the, basically the best way to get through it. These uh, second wave full of monsters, these next couple of waves, are pretty tricky for mage users like me because, of course, the majority of the enemies are range and uh, so you're going to pray range this whole time and this is where i try to take advantage of devotion i use it pretty much constantly through these next six or so waves because i do take a lot of damage from the archers and there are just countless numbers of archers in these waves so i obviously i put my prey range on when they're up but as soon as they're gone i go right back to prey melee I'm going to let Jad stay back there on the south end for now. As long as you make sure that you stay in this little northwest corner, you'll be okay. Save Jad for last. And then if you don't know how to defeat Jad, it's pretty simple. When he goes up on his hind legs like that, you want to pray magic. And when he goes uh, the quick bounce on the ground, you'll see in a second, you want to pray range. And uh, right there, there's the pray range. So... What I do is I, I just hover my thumb over the one that I'm not currently using. So in this moment, I have my thumb hovered over the prey magic so that I can pray quickly, as quickly as possible, magic, what I need to, um, whenever he shows the signs. So that's the way I get through that. I'll show you a little bit better way of doing that um, a little bit later once we get to the two and three Jad waves. But this wave seven is pretty, pretty similar to wave six, honestly. I kill the major first, even though the range guys are doing more damage it's because i want to try to use devotion to the best of its ability and i want to save my devotion for all of the range guys so i kill the melee or kill the magic guy as quick as i possibly can and then i pray range and use devotion so you're going to see me constantly using devotion in these waves right there because you do take so much damage if you are a magic user like me so try to just stay behind this little northwest rock here and uh, it kind of helps, I guess, keep some of the guys behind each other and make it a little bit easier for you. Of course, here I'm going to try to attack the ranger uh, without getting hit by the melee guy. But the, my little character guy ends up running behind the rock. But once I uh, get the range guy down, of course, I go I pray soul split here. 
and try to get some of these heals back on the melee guy. You're going to want to do that as much as you can, especially if you're learning. But this wave 8 is mostly rangers again. I take down this first ranger real quick, and then I'm going to keep the same strategy that I had on the previous wave. I'm going to go for the mage guys first, even though they do less damage on me. And I'm doing this because, again, I want to use devotion as much as possible. And I want to keep using my devotion for my parade range against these rangers. I want it to last as long as it can when I'm going up against all these big ranger guys. So this one is probably the hardest wave if you're a magic user because these big range guys do so much damage. And so if you see me clicking my inventory like this a couple of different times, I'm doing that because I'm keeping an eye on my health. And if I need to quickly heal or quickly eat some food or quickly even throw on my ring of death, then I can do that something that I've noticed that I don't really understand is a lot of the the big PVM YouTubers they never really bring a ring of death with them and maybe they're just more confident than me um, but I, I don't know I like to just be better safe than sorry so I bring my ring of death with me everywhere I go I had it with me in my last uh, video when I was doing normal mode care pack even though I was a hundred percent sure I wasn't gonna die and here I'm about 95 percent sure I'm not gonna die because I've done this so many different times but even though I know that, or I'm pretty confident in that, I still bring my Ring of Death. So something to keep in mind, Ring of Death is going to save your life, save you a lot of money. This, uh, this second Igneous Wave here, Wave 9, you want to obviously use some thresholds on these big rangers. It's just like in Wave 4 when you have the melee guys. The big rangers are just slightly larger versions of these smaller rangers. And of course they have a little bit more health and a little bit more damage. Um, but you just want to use some thresholds to come down as quickly as you possibly can. I like to use the um, the special attack, the Guthix uh, Claw special attack, because it does have a small cooldown, and you can kind of quickly go through and nail them down like that. And uh, what I do is I pretty much do the insta kill almost as soon as I can because I want to get these heals done. And I know, especially for this video, that I'm going to two cycles up pretty much every time. So again, I'm just trying to show you the strategy to survive a normal mode suck fight on mobile. So yeah, get these soft spit gains here, get them free. Don't suit, don't really worry about killing him this first round. You see, I get about 11,000 off there. If I was really going for a faster kill, I probably would have sunshine to probably would have done a lot more damage. Um, but yeah, again, trying to survive. So just DPS these big rangers down as quickly as you can. We're not super worried about the health bar here because we have our devotion on. We're about to use our devotion. Just keep in mind, especially if you're trying to learn Zuck on mobile, Devotion is going to be one of your best friends. Devo Devotion, Soul Split on Zuck, and uh, Camera Movement is going to save your life. So I get this last Ranger down here, and uh, I've kind of timed this weird. I already turned the camera once I'm almost done, and I go right back to Zuck, insta-kill as quick as possible so that they don't keep killing me. I uh, Sometimes, you know, when you click Zuck, he, your character runs right up on him, and I don't like that. I like to be pretty much where uh, I'm going to be when Zuck binds me and moves me. So I just use a little bit of a, a, um, a heal there with my Enhanced Excalibur. If you don't have that, it's going to be okay, especially if you just bring a pack yak or a pack man with extra food. The Igneous, or the Zuck Cape Omni Power there was super, super helpful for getting that big boy down that challenge wave. I make sure to have at least 60% so I can use that. If you don't have a Zuck Cape, you want to make sure you have at least 80, 90 adrenaline there. And this safe spot for Zuck, by the way, is extremely, extremely dangerous, especially because Zuck kind of spawns late. If you don't like this spot, uh, not Zuck, sorry, Jad. If you don't like this spot for this Jad wave, you can go to the southeastern corner, and it is significantly better. Um, I've just found this saves me some time from traveling all the way to the southeast corner back to the northwest corner, and he does not attack you with melee if you're standing in this exact spot. Something that you want to keep in mind with these Jad fights is you do not want to stand in melee distance because praying against all three of his attacks are really difficult for somebody who's not an absolute sweaty pro at this game. So I'm not a sweaty pro at this game. I'm just a mobile uh, PVMer here on the escape, and I'm standing in this corner. I'm trying to stay, kill everything I can on my way to killing uh, the second Jad over here. I get um, I get this little birdie guy out of the way because they're pretty annoying, and I'm just making sure I keep an eye on Jad at all times. So I'm gonna t I took out that bird, but I'm keeping an eye on Jad just because you want to keep praying the right thing at the right time. 
Again, when he stands up on his hind legs, pray magic. When he slams on the ground, pray range. You probably know that. I'm just reiterating it in case maybe you forgot or you're new or you're um, just trying to learn a little bit better. So I have to reapply my animate dead here and I go and I soul split the big melee here. And um, again, this is a strategy that you want to use as much as possible in the Zuck fight. You want to soul split whenever you can, especially on these last couple of melayers at the end of these waves like that. These last couple of waves here on the, on the Zuck rounds are mostly magic users, but they start out with these two big range guys, and I like to take them out as quick as possible because they do a whole bunch of damage, and I am not trying to deal with them while dealing with these magic guys. So I take out the range guys as quick as I can, and as soon as they're dead, I throw on a Devotion because these big magic boys, they do a whole bunch of damage. And they actually have a bleed on them, if you can see down there. I can't remember if I freedom them here or not, but it's definitely something that you want to do is freedom from this bleed. Because if you don't have a lot of food or if you don't have tank armor, animate dead, stuff like that, it's going to do a lot of damage on you. So as you can tell, I pretty much just stay in this corner for the whole fight up until the last couple of waves with the three jads. And uh, you can do that. And I didn't start doing that until I got significantly better at, at this Zuck fight. I stood in the southeastern corner there um, for the majority of the time when I was learning this. So that's something that you can do as well if you're not feeling comfortable with this northwestern corner here. So yeah, here we go. I get a... Uh, round 13 in and uh, we're going after this ranger first of course because again he does a lot of damage so i had to eat there for the first time in the fight um if you are learning you will probably have eaten by now and that is okay because when you're learning to defeat zuck especially on mobile first i'd say 10 kills or so you really just want to get into a rhythm find where you like to stand find where you feel comfortable you're trying to memorize where the monsters uh, spawn in each round so this at this point i'm 30 kills in i spent about 15 hours or so maybe 14 hours doing zuck over and over and over again so i know every single round where each of the guys are going to spawn i know in that back right corner there that that big mage boy is going to spawn there i know he's going to be my last kill too because i know immediately after this round is going to be another igneous round so you'll see in a second, after I get this la these last two big mage boys down, I go immediately to where round 14 starts and where I need to be for that. So I soul split a little bit here to kind of get some health back, and you'll see me as soon as this guy's down, I'm going to go right over to the right here, and I'm going to stand in the shield of the mage guy that I know is coming for round 14. The, uh, the Igneous wave here round 14 has three mage guys. The only way you can deal really big damage to them is use if you stand within melee distance of them, stand inside their shield. And this is something that's actually really tricky for mobile users because if you're a PC user, you can just click inside the shield and you'll go there. But if you're a mobile user, you see I have to hold down because if I click in the general area, it'll attack him, but it won't move there. So I have to hold my finger down, quickly slide over to the walk here button, and, and then he will go inside the shield in the melee distance area. You see me clicked right there. I have to hold down and then click walk here to get in melee distance again. And that's going to be something that's very, very, very important for the actual Zuck fight when you have to do the pizza part and you have to get to the mage thing. I'll, I'll show you when we get there, but that's pretty difficult to learn, especially on mobile. But I'm, of course, I'm going to two cycle Zuck here again. Uh, just go ahead and go for the insta kill, get my soul split gains back in not worried about getting a one cycle in. I know this is going to be a semi long video, but I'm going for it. So after this wave, I know again, I know I'm not gonna one cycle him. I can see the health going down. I can see that's not gonna happen. And so what I do is I click where I'm gonna go again. You see me have to hold down, click walk here. That's just gonna take practice. You're gonna miss it. You're gonna click examine so many times instead of clicking walk here, especially if you're learning because you might be panicking a little bit. But what you want to do is hold down. So I basically put my finger on the mage guy. You see me here. Uh, I click on the mage guy. I hold down. And then I click walk here. And that's something that you're just going to have to learn basically by muscle memory again how to do. Uh, it's going to take practice, guys. So just don't be upset if you mess it up. Click on the mage guy. Click walk here. It's going to take a minute. The hold down function for the mobile users is probably one of 
the most difficult things to master when it comes to PVM on mobile RuneScape. It's just so easy on the PC to click or right click and then click walk here. You just can't do that on mobile. You have to do the hold down and then walk here. It's something that you just got to get used to and it's something you also have to know that you're going to have to do. So being aware of that and anticipating and knowing I'm about to have to click or hold down and then click walk here uh, is going to help you a lot. And you'll see what I mean once we get to the actual Zuck fight. But if you don't know the strategy for defeating this Igneous Wave, you want to make sure without a doubt that you have 100% adrenaline because you want to barricade here. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. The easiest way is to just have barricade and have turtling four on your shield. I know, by the way, after that wave that three Jads are showing up. So I surge as quick as possible to the southeastern corner. This is by far the best safe spot in the whole entire Zuck fight. I used to use it, like I said earlier, for basically the whole fight. Um, I just recently switched to where I was standing earlier, but for the three Jads, this is the best place to spawn in my opinion, because you can very, very easily deal with each Jad one-on-one -on -one without having to worry about the other two going ham on you. So. You see me here just pray flicking, the, of course, the way that you're supposed to. I slowly make my way up to this second Jad. Sometimes, rarely, if you click on the Jad here, your character will walk right up to him, walk around the wall, and be in melee distance. And that is very, very not good. So what I'll do is I'll click the ground right in front of Jad to make sure my player goes there and stops, and then I'll attack Jad. Sometimes it'll, it'll happen here as well, where I will click on Jad and he'll walk right up within melee distance of Jad. And so I click a couple of tiles away from him, and then I kill Jad from a distance, of course, because you do not want to be in melee distance of Jad. If you saw real quick there on my, uh, my log, I think it said I have 248 Jad kills, and pretty much all of those Jad kills are in this Zuck fight. And you just get so many of them throughout the whole thing that uh, kind of adds up there. Here we go though, we're going to move right into wave 17. This is Harak, and, and honestly, I think this is probably the easiest part of the Zuck fight in my opinion. I thought it was the easiest part of the fight kiln. I just don't think that Harak does a lot of damage. There's a couple things you need to watch out for. If you saw that lava thing shoot up in the air and land right next to me, that will steal your adrenaline. You want to avoid that at all costs, especially if you're trying to get Harak down quickly. You see, basically the entire Harak fight, you can soul split and get so much of your health back because you're just basically standing here avoiding the water or avoiding sorry the fire and dpsing down harakin and uh usually i can get this done in one cycle but in this video here i'm going to get this done in two and while while he's down in the lava you know moping around i'm just going to kill his tentacle guys i missed the uh the uh the fire thing there but it's all right because you have a little bit of time between now and when he pops his head back up again so just dps down these tentacles as quickly as you can what i do for the this part here where he bombards you is i just surge away i know that his tentacles or his uh the splash from those things go in an x pattern and so i just kind of move horizontally back and forth you'll see i go from one side of the arena back to the other side of the arena both times that he does a bombard if you've never been uh, in a Harakin fight before, especially in the Zuck uh, fight here, he does two bombardments and then he goes back, or he comes back out of the lava so you can attack him again. So all you wanna do in the meantime is try to kill as many of the tentacles as you can. I surge back over to avoid all the splashes of that lava there. If you don't surge or if you missed that there, it's going to kill you, almost without a doubt. So here we go, I try to surge into where uh, Harakin is over there, but I just miss it a little bit there. Uh, DPS him down. It's not going to take too long. It's going to be a quick two cycle Harakin here. Again, I'm avoiding the fire coming out of the lava just because I want to keep my adrenaline up as high as I can because it's going to help me to two cycle Harakin. If it takes you three or even four or even five cycles of Harakin uh, to get him down, especially once you're learning this, it's not a big deal. You really aren't going to take a lot of damage here, especially if you have soul split going. So just take your time, DPS him down, and then once you get him down, you only have one more thing to worry about, and that's the actual Zuck fight. 
So here we go. What I do is I reapply everything. I reapply my overload. I reapply my anime dead. I, you, you know, you can't poison Zuck, so I don't do that. I get ready as soon as possible with a freedom because I know the very first thing he does is he does the seer attack on you, which does the uh, damage over time bleed, and you don't want to deal with that at all. So I seer or I freedom immediately. And then what I do is I surge and then I click as quick as I can to go right back to my spot. If you don't know, you have to move 15 tiles to get rid of the bleed for that as well. And it does take down your health and you don't want that either. I surge a second time here and then I put on my shield immediately. So this is very important because if you don't do a resonance here, then you will take about a 5k hit and it is something you don't want to have to deal with when dealing with Zuck. So I resonance that. After every third auto attack, he does these special attacks, and I know that. So after I do that surge for the little earthquake attack, he I know that he's going to do three autos, and then I need to resonance. So what I do here for the pizza round is I put on soul split, and I click as much as possible, and then I click on the actual igneous guy and surge. You see me here? I think I might be in the fire, so I move a little bit. But as long as you surge to the little spot where the igneous guy is that's totally fine and what i do mid surge is i hover my finger over the stun asphyxiate there so that i do it immediately as soon as i get there same thing happens here i think i might be in the, in the little bit of a fire pizza so i move over and you have to use thresholds of course on this igneous ranger and i get him down and i'm already moving to where i need to go if you did not know the igneous creatures especially on normal mode go to the north west of where Zuck is standing every single time. So basically you, you just need to know after every single uh, different pizza thing, the creature is going to show up on his right shoulder. So you want to already be clicking over there to his right shoulder so that you can get there as quick as possible. The strategy I use for that is I click in the general area away from Zuck so that I don't actually accidentally click on Zuck. And as soon as the creature shows up, I click on the creature a million times and then surge as soon as my, my little guy is facing the creature. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the basics of the Zuck fight. I'm gonna have to go through all of that again. So you see me surge here, and I walk a little bit more, and as soon as I get that bleed off, I start DPSing again. But it's important that you get your 15 steps in. Surge does 10 of that. And you uh, surge again here, of course, so you avoid all of the earthquakes. That's one, that's two, and we're gonna have a third auto attack right there, that's three. And then I resonance so that I can get this zero hit. It doesn't heal me, of course, because it's a too powerful of an attack. But after that, I go right back into DPS. I use some thresholds if I can. But I'm, it's important to note, you want to keep your adrenaline high enough so that when you get to the pizza part, you have enough adrenaline immediately to stun the Ignis guy. So again, he pulls me. I put on Soul Split. I'm clicking over his right shoulder. I click on the Ignis guy. I surge. And I immediately, as I'm surging, click on Asphyxiate because I want to stun him as quick as I possibly can. I get in a couple of DPS hits here. My uh, you know, my familiar is uh, helping me out a whole lot here. So I'm clicking in the on his shoulder, basically, on the general area. I go again for the threshold on this uh, Igneous Archer guy here. I DPS him down, and I know already he's going to be to the top left of Zuck's right shoulder. So I'm clicking in that area again. This is tricky, see I have to, I miss it there. I have to hold down and then click walk here to get underneath his shield. And that's the part where I've died at so many different times is learning that I have to click on the guy and then hold down, click walk here. Kind of like what I was talking about uh, earlier in the third igneous wave of the actual fight. But yeah guys, that's about it. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, I'm going to DPS him down the whole rest of the way without having to do a pizza uh, part again and so if you didn't know once Zuck gets to 100k life points on normal mode you no longer have to deal with the pizza mechanic he basically starts over he does the sear he does the uh the thing where you start getting a bleed until you walk and then he does the earthquake thing and you just circle that but yeah that is my normal mode Zuck kill it took me about 26 minutes a couple minutes longer than i usually get but Hopefully you guys understood all that. Hopefully I was clear enough. Um, I'm going to make maybe another one of these once I uh, learn how to do this with less tanky armor and stuff. But that's all I got for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me anything you need to in the comments. I'm happy to explain this more. Um, I'm probably going to make more of these, so just be on the lookout. But other than that, thank you guys for looking at Zuck from a mobile perspective.